My name is Juna Kohlmeyer from the Carnegie Observatories, and I am an astronomer there. So I am a theoretical astrophysicist, and I study how things in the universe form, like the stars, the galaxies, and the black holes that, uh, that we see with our telescopes. And then we try to devise surveys to test those theories so that we can probe our understanding of our universe. I had planned to be a lawyer. I had, uh, had every intention of going to college and then going to law school. And I thought that because I like to argue, it meant that I should be a lawyer. So when I was in high school, I went to this science camp, really nerd camp at the Michigan State University uh, called the High School Honor Science Program. And it still exists today. And before going to that camp, I didn't realize that you could be a scientist as a job, as a career, that you could go and do science and get money to do that. Um, while I was in that program, I did a project and I just fell absolutely head over heels for the idea that you could figure out the real way the universe works by taking a theoretical prediction and comparing it to observations that people had made. So the Sloan Digital Sky Survey is a multi-year undertaking to make the most detailed map of the universe that we have. So it started in the 90s uh, and it's been going through different phases and at every different phase it changes its focus and it changes what it does and I'm the director of the fifth phase of SDSS, uh, SDSS-5. Uh, but it's really a different project at every phase. So originally uh, they were trying to get a million redshifts, a million redshifts to figure out about the dark matter and the dark energy uh, in the universe. Now we're trying to figure out how stars form, how galaxies form, how the Milky Way formed, how black holes grow and evolve. And that's the focus of SDSS-5. To my mind, the importance of surveys like SDSS and other surveys like it is that we are really struggling to understand where we live in the cosmos, where we came from, where we're going, are we alone, are, is the Earth unique? Uh, and in order to understand those questions, you have to probe a huge range of systems. If you just look in the solar system, you could conclude that, well, there's no, no other people, so we must be it. Um, if you just look at the Milky Way, you could conclude that the Milky Way is like all the other galaxies. But in fact, there's a really broad range of different galaxies. There's a really broad range of different planets. Uh, and that, uh, that gives us clues as to how these systems form and evolve and also, um, also the different physics that underlies that formation. And so what we're really after is, is the origin of, of, uh, of, of where we are here and now and how that came to be from 14 billion years of cosmic evolution to the present uh, and with the ingredients that we have in the cosmos. And so that's what we're really after is understanding about the physical nature of the universe. What is, what is it? What are black holes? Is it common to make planets like Earth or are planets like Earth rare? Um, do you mostly get Jupiters or Neptunes? Um, all of these all of these questions are are unanswered, and you need you need massive surveys in order to make big progress in in these questions. So one of the biggest discoveries uh, that SDSS has made uh, has to do with cosmology and has to do with the components of the universe. And in particular, uh, SDSS discovered the what's called baryon acoustic oscillations and um, and that those are patterns in the galaxy distribution that is the large scale structure of the galaxies. Uh, so not just the structure of an individual galaxy, but now the structure of millions of galaxies uh, that tell us about the fundamental constituents of the universe, how much dark matter there is, how much dark energy there is. Um, 
how much regular matter there is. Another really exciting thing that SDSS discovered were the population of very, very low mass galaxies that are within the Milky Way. So there are the Milky Way, uh, we think, was formed by a combination of uh, stars that formed in situ from the gas in the Milky Way and in its disk, and also stars that formed in other galaxies that have been uh, merged with the Milky Way. So the Milky Way has this cannibalistic property that it eats smaller galaxies, and all the big galaxies do it. Uh, and that's a property of the galaxy distribution and the galaxy structure um, and the dynamics of the universe. What SDSS was able to do through its, uh, through its early imaging was to find the existence of very, very low luminosity galaxies that have luminosities similar to, um, similar to, the, to, to clusters of stars. So they have very, very little starlight, but a huge amount of mass. And that's because they have uh, dark matter. Uh, and now, not a huge amount of mass relative to the Milky Way, but relative to the relative to the stars, the mass and stars that they have. And so that was another really important discovery uh, from SDSS. But SDSS has a tremendous number of discoveries. There's been over 8,000 papers written using SDSS data. Of course, SDSS found the highest redshift quasars, uh, and uh, that's you know these are black holes that are accreting. These, um, we, we didn't know how early in the universe's history you could make big black holes. And it was SDSS that, that told us that you have black holes uh, very early in the history of the universe uh, when you, at the same time that you have really the first galaxies forming. And that tells us something very interesting about the formation of these big billion solar mass black holes at the, at the very earliest periods in the history of the universe. Um, but there, yeah, there's a, there are many, many more uh, important discoveries from SDSS. <laughs> the next generation of astronomical surveys is going to be quite interesting because the volumes of data are even larger than what we have in SDSS. So SDSS was groundbreaking uh, in, uh, you know, in, in, in the beginning. Now the data volumes that we're getting even in SDSS5 aren't, aren't um, so overwhelming, but in, f in the future there will be much, much larger data sets. I think a big thing that we're doing in SDSS5, of course, is we're moving from plates to robots. So instead of, uh, instead of using uh, spectroscopic plug plates, we're actually using robotic fiber positioners to do our spectroscopy, and that's how we map. Uh, that's how we map out the stars and the galaxies and the black holes. Um, that means that we can do spectroscopy as a function of time much more readily and rapidly, and it means that we can survey many more objects uh, more. Um, uh, readily because we don't have to change out physically a big aluminum plate. Uh, so we're hoping that that advance, and that's uh, that's true in other surveys as well. Uh, almost uh, there's a there's a number of surveys, both uh, you know on bigger telescopes that are not uh, not SDSS uh, that are using this robotic uh, technology. Then people have used robots in the past, but they're really kind of coming into their own now. Um, so we're certainly we're certainly excited about we're certainly excited about the sort of robotic revolution for astronomical sky surveys. Um, I think one of the things I'm really excited about is that there's this opportunity that we have both because of that very high multiplexing and because of the robotization of the focal plane. There's there's really an opportunity for us to map a very large fraction of the observable uh, galaxy population, at least the big galaxies. And to me, that's really exciting because our theories of dark matter and dark energy really are guided by these observational constraints. And 
Once you have mapped all of these systems and you have not just the maps of the galaxies, but you also have maps of uh, the radio emission and you have maps of uh, X-ray emission and you have all of these multi-wavelength maps, you put together this, you put together all of these puzzle pieces and there is just no way that any, um, there's no room for any sort of ambiguity uh, in some sense. And I am very excited about that possibility that within my lifetime and certainly uh, hopefully within the lifetime of my children, we will see a transformation in what we think about the words that we even use now to talk about the universe, dark matter, dark energy. I think we're going to, I hope uh, that we're going to see really transformative changes in the, in, in those, in that area, uh, because there's nowhere to hide. Uh, there's just, we are closing in on all parts of parameter space so tightly that, um, that, that it, that it should be a very, um, we should expect real breakthroughs in, in that area.